How many people here are harboring that sneaking suspicion? You know, um, what I what I do think is that um, the classical Mayan civilization possessed a highly advanced knowledge around the psychical and fractal nature of time. They, they understood time and cosmic cycles in, in, in a way that um, is beyond what, what, what we in the modern West understand. And they had a, uh, you know, a, a mathematical way, way, of, way of exploring this, as well as exploring it through studying cos cosmic cycles, uh, astronomy, and so on. Uh, they had an instrument called the Azulkin, which is the 13 by 20 day sacred count of the Maya. Uh, it's a 260 day count. Uh, 260 days is also, you know, the um, sort of length of gestation of, of a pregnancy, of a human pregnancy, the average length of, uh, of it takes to, before uh, giving birth. Uh, and then you have, um, you know, these 26,000 year roughly procession of the equinox cycle. Um, so it seems like they, they beamed into, through their mathematics, some kind of uh, deeper level of cosmic uh, understanding. Uh, there's also some very interesting links uh, that Jose Arguelles explored uh, between the, uh, Mayan, the, the Mayan calendar and the I Ching, uh, which another thinker that uh, Terence McKenna uh, also, also explored in depth. So, so essentially, I, I began to explore this whole notion of what would be this transition that we're going through as a species, um, and how can we um, maybe participate in it, you know, if it's happening, you know, if it's a good thing. So, so rather than for me, um, you know, 2012 or December 21st, 2012, or the end of the Mayan long count calendar being a bad thing, I think it's actually, um, essentially, and I keep trying to find the best way to language it because it's not easy, it's something like a coming out party or a cosmic celebration or, or the um, coming into conscious self-realization of humanity as a species, okay? And, and not that to put a date on it, I think that it's an ongoing process, but, but we all here are participating in that process, you know, as, as we integrate, you know, various disciplines, various healing modalities, uh, Eastern and Western thought, um, you know, how, however we bring these things and weave them into our lives um, is part of the prophecy coming to be through us. So, so yeah, so, so that, that, that is really how I approach this situation, that we can see the, uh, the negative factors of what's happening on the planet, uh, such as uh, climate change, uh, species extinction, um, um, you know, resource depletion, uh, industrial catastrophe, you know, th these are all happening and they're quite severe and they're going to impact our future, we know, we know that. Um, but, but I also think that they're, that they're an aspect of this, um, this, this process of, uh, of, 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 a, of a psychophysical kind of uh, transmutation, you know, in a sense, of, humans, of, of the human species. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, I think that if we look at, we step back and we look at our history, um, you know, we can see that... Um, over 5,000 years ago, there was kind of the beginning of uh, patriarchy, you know, in uh, Egypt, you know, Babylon, uh, Greece, Rome, you know, the, the creation of empire, uh, hierarchical priest class structures, and, 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 and a way of living that pulled us away from our, from our natural relationship to time and to being. So, so, so in a sense, we could look at this process as a necessary period of separation, or let's say desynchronization or alienation, where, where we can see it as an evolutionary process, where humanity had to come out of that relationship to natural time and to kind of intrinsic order uh, in order to fully experience separation, to fully uh, experience alienation, and it was only at that extreme of separation and alienation that we could discover, develop and discover the types of modern science and technologies that we have de developed. Um, that somehow this was a latent capacity in, in the human being that also needed to come to the fore. And so this period, uh, which different spiritual traditions discuss as the Kali Yuga, you know, or the apocalypse, you know, is something that, you know, we, we, are, we are living through in our own time. Um, but once again, that, that has many sided aspects. And for instance, the word apocalypse. Uh, how many people here know what that word uh, really means? Yeah? What's that? Yeah, revealing, exactly. It's uncovering or revealing. So, so the apocalypse is a time when everything that was hidden uh, becomes known and available. 
And, and for me, that's definitely an extremely um, profound quality of this time that we're in right now. Um, you know, if you look at WikiLeaks or the internet or, or you know, everything that's happening, no, no scandal gets un unturned over, you know, whether there's reaction to it or not. You know. so, 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 yeah, so we can see that we've gone through this historical process of uh, separation, alienation from the source, and potentially we're approaching the opportunity for a uh, reunion or reconciliation, you know, a, uh, a jubilee, you know, a forgiveness of debts. Um, you know, wh whether this happens on December 21st, which now is looking like a pretty tight deadline, you know, or sometime in the future, I think that's, that, that's, that's the way that we're, we're heading, you know. And, 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 and we're seeing this happen, um, you know, in different ways. You know, I mentioned the, uh, the climate change, you know, the species extinction crisis, the industrial accidents like the Fukushima accident and, and the British petroleum spill in the Gulf. But then we also have to see the, the positive uh, things that are happening. And one of them for me was the uh, Occupy movement. Uh, I don't know how many people here participated or checked out Occupy in, in whatever form. Uh, I kind of didn't really pay attention to it for a while in New York. And then finally when I went down to Occupy Wall Street, I was extremely uh, moved and actually totally blown away by what was happening there. And I felt that you know, I, it was just not being represented in any way you know, right. That, that basically Occupy Wall Street, as I understood it, is not, it was not a protest movement at all, really. I mean, the protest was kind of like the shell around it, but what was inside of that was a process movement. And, and, and the process was how do we determine like a new way of being, a new social and political structure so that we can live transparently, you know, and, and, and collaboratively and cooperatively. And in a way, like that tiny concrete park of uh, Occupy Wall Street was kind of like a new cell in a kind of uh, social organism. Um, it had everything there, you know, it had a sustainability area, it had recycling, it had gray water, uh, it had a meditation and spirituality area, it had a kitchen, uh, it had a little garden even, and it had a place, you know, I think most importantly and, and most missing from our society today, there was a place for people to actually debate and, and, deci and decide upon the critical issues, you know, for their community. So I think that Occupy is extremely instructive on many levels. I mean, first of all, the way it uh, emerged and sort of coalesced, you know, went global and then essentially kind of like dispersed and, and almost dissolved. Uh, I think is a very interesting expression of what our new network communication technologies, um, you know, allow for and, and, and in a sense kind of uh, permit. And obviously when talking about Occupy, we also have to talk about the, the Arab Spring and, 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 and that extreme outpouring of, of a human desire for uh, liberation from uh, authoritarian uh, oppression. And, um, you know, one thing, as somebody who's interested in the Mayan calendar, you know, which goes back, which started in 3113 BC, I guess, which was the height of the uh, empire of Egypt. It, it's very, it's like a numinous correspondence that this new maybe breakthrough into this next level of human, human emancipation and the overturning of, of the pyramid of hierarchy, you know, began in Egypt, you know? That, that to me seemed like, um, yeah, something more than just serendipitous in a way. Um, so anyway, yeah, so we see with Occupy, you know, the, the emergence, the, let, let's say to me it feels like um, our social structures as we have them now are kind of like a crust that's hardened and, and this other life form is now trying to, to, to find its way. And it's, it's almost like you look at it as a mycelial underground network that pops up when the opportunity presents itself, then, then, the, then that, that crust culture, you know, stamps it down and pretends it doesn't exist, but actually that, that's already strengthening the, the network underground. Um, I think, yeah, there's, there's, there's a number of very useful metaphors uh, for understanding the process of transformation that I believe that we're going to see happening over the next years. I don't know if it's year or decades, but I think faster than, than we can anticipate. Uh, and one of the most beautiful ones is the uh, caterpillar to the, to the butterfly. Um, you know, mo most people assume that when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, uh, you know, the, the basically it, it retains its caterpillar nature in, in the chrysalis and then sort of sprouts wings. But, but what actually happens is, is, is the whole caterpillar kind of melts down and there's a handful of imaginal cells, like sort of six, that, that contain the kind of um, codes for this new organism to, to orchestrate itself out, out of the remnants of the old. 